lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have my June mid-month wrap up. Sorry for the bare shelves, they're looking quite bare. Um, that's because I'm going to book Bonanza very soon in like three days. So, <laughs> um, these shelves are bare because that whole rest of the shelf is Ruby Dixon and then these are a bunch of dark romances by authors that are, are going to be a book banana. It looks kind of chaotic, but it's fine. We're fine. Okay, let's talk about all 13 books that I've read so far this month. Granted, two of those out of the 13 were DNFs. So let's get into these books. I'm gonna go from what book I started at the beginning of the month to the last book that I finished last night. So quickly, I ended up reading the next two books for the Summer of Tessa Dare read along that's hosted by me, Rachel, Samantha, Tiffany, and B. Um, we put on the Summer of Tessa Dare. Tomorrow is our third live show that will be on my channel. Um, so tune in if, uh, if, if you've read the Spindle Cove series. We read A Week to Be Wicked and A Lady by Midnight, both for a live show. I'll link that live show down below. And um, I really enjoyed my reads of both of these books. I think I gave both of them 4.5 stars. Um, and I'm going to be coming out with like a Spindle Cove deep dive vlog later this month. So you can look forward to that if you want to know more of my thoughts about these books. But um, yeah, this one's about Minerva and Colin and it's a road trip romance filled with amazing banter. And then A Lady by Midnight is kind of like hidden identity, class difference kind of romance. It's hard to explain, but it's about Kate who's kind of like the piano teacher in Spindle Cove. And um, the hero is a war veteran who is in charge of the militia in Spindle Cove. So, um, or like the right, no, the right hand man to the guy who leads the militia. Anyway, I really enjoyed my reread of both of these. I love these books so much. Um, and I love discussing them with all of my lovely friends. So um, be sure to tune in tomorrow for our next live show if you want to chat with us. Next, I ended up reading Until You by Katarina Mora. I wanted to pick up a book by this author because she will be at Book Bonanza. And I know a few of my friends really like her books, so I decided to pick up Until You, which is the first book in her... I think Off Limits series. I think there's like four or five books in the series. I can't even really describe this book all that much. It's about Grayson and Arya and I don't remember like anything. <laughs> I'm giving this book three stars. There was a lot going on in this book. I remember that. There's like a side plot. There are romances going on. There's like a billion things going on in this book and the romance was not focused on heavily, heavily enough for me. When I read romance books, I don't really care most of the time don't really care about the side plot that's happening. I know a lot of readers, romance readers, need that side plot to happen as well as the romance itself, but I'm more of a character-driven reader where I want to be solely focused on the couple and I don't really care about this other side plot stuff. One book that I'm going to talk about at the end of this video, like there was like a heist going on the whole time and I'm like, I don't care. I want to read about their romance, not this heist that they're performing. So like, that's kind of how I felt in this one. And there's also like a double hidden identity where like that plot line where both characters have been anonymous, anonymously chatting online and like they don't know that it's the other person, but then they're also falling for each other in real life. Oh, and it's also brother's best friend. I forgot to say that too. So, and I think she like moves in with him to like start working at his like tech company or something like that. I don't know. I didn't, it's more of a 2.5 star, honestly, now that I think about it. Cause I don't remember like just about anything. <laughs> so this just wasn't memorable to me. I don't really care about the side plot lines. Like there's a few books that I actually care about the side plots going on. That's why I'm not really a romantic suspense reader all that much is because I don't really care about the suspense, suspense part. <laughs> um, I want to be solely focused on the couple and the characters. Next, I did a reread. I don't have the physical copy in front of me because it's packed away because it's going to book Bonanza to be signed. Um, but I did a reread of The Half Orcs Maiden Bride by Ruby Dixon. This is her orc fantasy romance that I love five stars. Five stars upon reread, obviously. But I had to reread this one because my um, library, my Libby, finally got the audiobook in for this. And when I originally read it, it was through KU as an ebook. So I had to listen to it. I had a grand old time listening to it. Like both narrators were whew, so good. Um, but this is a fantasy romance. Like I said, Yolanthe is our heroine in here. And she is kind of like sold to this orc by her father. 
um, because no one like really wants to marry her. Um, and this orc is like more than willing to make Yolanthe his, like respectfully. He asks her, he's like, if you don't want to be my wife, that is totally fine. You're, I'm not forcing you to, um, but I just want to let you know, like I would very much look forward to you being my wife. Like you are very attractive and really strong, like yes. So they have to go through these marriage rituals and they get married. And then the same marriage rituals that are in <laughs> The King's Spinster Bride, which is another favorite Ruby book for me. So I love this book, five stars upon reread obviously so um I, I just love it so much and I'm really hoping that I get the exclusive edition of this book that Ruby is selling at Book Bonanza like I have to be like one of the first people there to get that book like I need it I need it so um I'm gonna manifest it pray for me it's gonna happen next I read an alien romance this one's called Craving His Mate by A.G. Wilde this is the second book in the Faded Mates of the Atari series. So these are all, four books, are all about heroines who have physical disabilities and then becoming Faded Mates to this uh, alien species called the Atari. Like the book, first book in the series really sets it up. Um, like these four women get kidnapped by evil aliens and the Atari go to rescue them. So this one's about Trudy and I think you pronounce it Queno. Quino. Um, Trudy in here is our wheelchair user. You got to meet her in book one. In book one, you see her and the other women being kidnapped by some evil aliens. And they took her without her wheelchair. And so she is a slave, but she has to like drag her body across the floor to move anywhere. All of A.G. Wilde's books really have those dark elements to it. So just please be aware of that. Um, but it does have its lighter side. Like A.G. Wilde, like I feel like really integrates dark and light alien romance like together in a book um so I really appreciate her for that but um yeah Trudy has been forced into slavery by some aliens and she's forced to like work in these mines and also be kind of like a waitress of sorts in this bar that these evil aliens own but it's kind of like set up for failure in these aliens eyes they made her be this waitress because how she's supposed to carry drinks if she can't like walk she has to drag herself across the floor to give drinks so she's constantly spilling drinks all over herself and other people and getting beaten because of it um it's like a horrible endless cycle so our hero in here Queno ends up going to this bar because he can sense that he needs to be there and it turns out he finds Trudy goes absolutely feral like that she's being treated this way and he quickly realizes like this is his fated mate and the fact that these aliens are treating like a living being like this let alone his fated mate like this is so horrible to him like he is furious um but he tries to like beat up all these aliens but there's too many of them so he poses a deal with them and is like i'll work in your minds if you give me this woman to protect and so that's all I can really say. Trigger warnings in this one for ableism, slavery, verbal and physical abuse, death, gore, and starvation. Tropes, alien romance, fated mates, you have a mating bite. There's disability representation and you have the savior trope. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I ended up picking up Juniper Hill by Devney Perry. This was a recommendation from Zay and Victoria. I will be rooming with them when we go to Book Bonanza and they both want to go to Devney Perry's table. And I was like, okay, I want to go to her table too, but I've never read anything. What do y'all recommend? Both of them said Juniper Hill immediately and I just had to pick it up. Our heroine in here, Memphis, is a single mom who ends up moving to, I think it's called Quincy, Montana, and hopes to start like a better life for her and her baby, Drake. What she doesn't expect is the owner of her apartment um, because it's above this man's garage um, that she's like renting out. She doesn't expect this burly, gruff, man named Knox. At first he's not the most welcoming towards Memphis because he is very attracted to her. He has his own issues involving relationships and women and you get to know more about that when you read the book obviously. But everything changes for him. He does not keep himself as a distance at a distance anymore. Um, when he helps Memphis one night soothe her baby to sleep, um, Drake has colic and he's like crying all the time and Memphis is just so drained and feels like she's being a horrible mother because her baby keeps crying, but he has colic. There's nothing to do. She's not doing anything wrong. Knox then tells Memphis, like, maybe he just needs another pair of arms to, like, be held in. And so he basically rocks Drake to sleep almost, like, every night. It's so cute. Victoria and Zay knew that this book was for me. I love babies. 
Um, and so I really, really loved this one. I really loved Knox as a character who was really there for Memphis and Drake. At the end of that book, like he was full force being like, Drake is my son. Like he is mine. I don't care what anyone else says. Like that baby is my son. Like. I love him so much. There is a Trigoring in here for kidnapping, so be aware of that, please. Uh, tropes, character-driven. You have a chef. The hero's a chef. Um, babies, it's a foodie romance because the hero's a chef. It's on KU. You have neighbors. There's no third act breakup, which is my favorite. Um, it's a workplace romance because she ends up working at the same inn that he works at. He's a chef at that his family owns. And she becomes um, like the housekeeper, one of the housekeepers for the inn. And he works at the restaurant there. You have a reluctant to love hero. Um, a sibling series, because I think the other siblings that are related to Knox have their own books in this series. Um, you have a single mom and it is a small town romance. I gave this book five out of five stars. Last month, I ended up reading Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. And so I finally read the kind of prequel novella you're supposed to read after you read Sea of Ruin, or I heard something that you could read it like in between like chapters something and something, I don't know. But I was just safe and read the novella after I read the physical book, even though it's book number 0.5, I still I still read it after the book. Anyway, um, so this is King of Libertines, if I did not say that already. Um, but this is basically the story of how Bennett and Priest meet. Um, Bennett is a heroine from Sea of Ruin and Priest is her husband. And this is like the story of how they met and how they fell in love. It's a very short, like 80 page novella. There's nothing much else to it. I gave this book four stars. It's more leaning towards like a 3.5. Like I thought it was fine, but I felt like this novella could probably just have been added into Sea of Ruin as like a flashback chapter or something. And that would have been totally fine for me. And I was actually kind of disappointed because I thought The King of Libertines was going to be a novella about two other characters meeting for the first time and falling in love. Like I thought that's what this was about. If you've read the book, you know who I'm talking about. I felt like, like I felt kind of jilted, <laughs> even though that's my own fault because I did not read like the summary or anything before I picked it up and I didn't know what the novella was gonna be about, but I honestly thought that it was gonna be about the other two characters meeting and falling in love. So like, I, I just disappointed myself, it's fine. Then I have my reread for Beauty and the Blacksmith by Tessa Dare. This is for our summer of Tessa Dare read along. This is one of the books that we're going to be discussing tomorrow for the Summer of Tessa Dare live show. I'm currently reading Any Duchess Will Do, which is book four. This is book number 3.5 in the series. This, I was telling my friends who are part of this uh, book club, live show, read along, whatever you wanna call it. I told them that this book gives me vibes of, I think it's Cinderella 2, like the second Cinderella movie when Anastasia and the baker like fall in love with each other. But the heroine in here is not mean like Anastasia. <laughs> That is never mean. She's super, super, super sweet. But it gives me those vibes. Like you have like the forbidden aspect. She is more titled than the hero. And you have like a meddlesome mother as well. The mother means well, don't worry. Um, but they gave me those vibes of like the Anastasia and, and Baker from that movie. So um, if that tickles your fancy, pick this novella up. It's one of my favorite Tessa Dare little reads. I really enjoy this one. Diana, you got to meet her in the other books in this series. And this is about her falling in love with the blacksmith, a part of Spindle Cove, but she is like a lady and her mother has always wanted her to marry like a titled man. So she's having to keep her affection for the blacksmith like to herself because it could end up going back to her mother and her mother would not be pleased. So um, I really enjoyed this one. I gave it five stars. I love this book a lot. We're gonna be talking about uh, some DNFs now. Um, first book I DNF'd is Into the Storm by Melanie Moreland. This is the second book that I've tried to read by Melanie Moreland and the second time I have DNF'd a book by Melanie Moreland. So I don't think Melanie Moreland is for me. I've talked to Caitlin about this because Caitlin has read Melanie Moreland and really loves some of Melanie Moreland's books. And I texted her, I was like, I'm so sorry, Caitlin. I don't think she is for me. I've tried to read two of her books and DNF both of them. She's going to book bonanza. So I really wanted to read like at least one of her books, you know? The heroine in here, she has amnesia. She was running away from like an abusive relationship and she's in a snowstorm and her car crashes and she gets amnesia from it. But the car crashes right in front of the hero's house and he kind of brings her into his home and tries to help her remember who she is again. Um, but like, he's super sweet. And then this is what I had an issue with in her other book. Like the guys are super sweet and caring and like very respectful towards like the women. 
um, in their relationship. But then all of a sudden, like something will trigger them and they'll like go off and say something like really mean to the heroine and then like crawl back on their knees later and be like, I'm so sorry, like I didn't mean it. I'm the type of person that's like, if you say something mean, like you obviously have to be like thinking about it. And um, that's very hard for me to like believe that you didn't mean it. So <laughs> like, I feel like your words hold a lot of value. And so I think in both of these books that I read by Melanie Moreland, um, the hero said something that I was like, nope, I'm done, I'm done. I would immediately just have walked out and like, no, I do not tolerate people who say mean, horrible things to other people. I don't care if you come back and grovel, like you obviously said it for a reason. So yeah, DNF'd that one fast. And that's also the reason why I DNF'd Lush Money by Angelina M. Lopez. This is another author going to book Bonanza. And um, first of all, the heroine here was like pissing me off. Like she, <laughs> like she was just pissing me off. This is a like billionaire heroine and a destitute prince. And she really wants to have her future baby be royalty. And so she pays this guy to basically be her baby daddy. But they're gonna get married also. Basically be her baby daddy so she can have a royal baby and they could try to have a royal baby in the span of a year. And she basically treats him like a piece of meat for like the first like three times they're together. And I'm like, this is uncomfortable. I don't care for this. And like, you get to be in the hero's point of view too. And he's uncomfortable too. He feels horrible about himself. And I'm like, hmm, I don't, I don't want to read that. And then I think the hero, like he's super sweet. I was really on his side. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I feel for this man. Like this woman is putting him through the ringer. Like what the heck? But then at one point he like snaps and says something that I'm like, huh, hold the brakes, please. Like that was uncalled for. <laughs> so DNF. Just like, I don't tolerate that in people in men specifically. Like I don't tolerate mean comments so dnf again uh, unfortunately but um that's okay it's fine i'm okay with it like i'm way better for my dnfs now and i am at peace with that <laughs> so i dnf both of those books while i was driving and i was driving like an hour away to houston and i was like <laughs> i need something good and so i came home and immediately picked up a Cassie Met novella. I was like, this Cassie Met novella has to put me in a better mood. Like I'm feeling slumpy because I DNF'd two books in a row. Let's pick up Grump Gone Wild by Cassie Met. Um, Grump reeled me in um, because I love me a grumpy hero if it's also grumpy sunshine. So um, unfortunately this one was fine. 2.5, three star from me. The hero in this one comes from a very prolific, uh, like kind of like famous, kind of like Hampton living family and um, he hires his assistant to be his girlfriend for like a family event because he's sick of his family like bugging him about dating or setting him up, him up on dates so he asks his assistant to be his fake date and he gives her kind of like also etiquette lessons um, and stuff like that. Uh, it was fine. Like on the trip, they end up realizing like, oh my gosh, you've liked me all along. Oh my gosh, you've liked me all along. Same here. And like, it was fine. It, not my favorite Cassie Mint. Again, I needed a book to like make me feel good. And this one has been sitting on my Kindle for a while ever since Samantha recommended it to me. And that's I've Walked Where You've Been by Marina Vivancos. Samantha is the guru for Marina Vivancos. She has a whole entire like guy video on her channel for the novellathon. Like she was hyping her up. Like I love the love she has for this author. So I heard about the synopsis of this book from Samantha, I think one of our live shows, and I immediately downloaded it to my Kindle. And I finally got around to reading it. I'm so glad I did. It was really good. So this book takes place in our world, basically like how we live, except like soulmates exist. And when you like lock eyes with your soulmate for the first time, like the soulmate bond is like linked and you cannot be like away from your soulmate for too long or you'll get like bond sickness or whatever. So um, it's not normal for like soulmate bonds to happen when uh, kids are like young. Normally they happen like, over the age of like 20, I think. Um, but our two love interests in here, Maddie and Ethan, they end up, I think, crossing the street one day with their families when they're about nine and they lock eyes and the bond, it, like 
comes together for the two of them. They realize that they are soulmates and both of their lives change completely after that point. The two of them are forced to be around each other and be in each other's lives basically for the rest of their life. Surprisingly, the two of them are not very happy about it. <laughs> Ethan and Maddie are complete and total opposites. They don't enjoy the same things and activities and they find the other to be annoying or mean or rude or whatever the case may be and so they don't really get along and so this takes place in like time jumps of them growing up together while having this bond between them where they really don't like each other to where they're in college and they have to go to the same college um because they cannot be apart from each other and uh how they like actually start to get to know the other person and they end up falling in love it was so beautiful watching these two grow in their love for one another like it was so cute and beautiful. Tropes for this one, you have Faded Mates, Hate to Love, KU, it's an MM romance. Uh, you have Opposites Attract and it's a novella. I give this book four out of five stars. And the last book that I have for this video, the book that I finished last night is Titan by Jillian Graves. Oh wait, I have a physical copy of this. Don't mind the books that just fell over there. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. My bookshelves are a mess. Um, but I do have this edition. This is the like alternate edition. Um, oh, and it's signed. I totally missed that. It was signed too by Jillian Graves. Um, but I read Blood Moon by Jillian Graves. I have a copy of it over there. Um, last year and it was one of my favorite books of the year. I loved it. It was a witch vampire romance. It was so good. Um, so I've been wanting to read Titan for a while and Libby finally had the audiobook. And um, this is like a gargoyle daddy dom romance is what she markets it as it's literally on the title right here a um gargoyle daddy dom romance so the heroine in here jules uh she is a sugar baby <laughs> and she even is on the sugar baby website and she ends up getting roped in to titan's gargoyle world and he has her help him with this like task that the gargoyles have to find this very treasured relic um and that's all I can really say without spoiling something. Um, but I was not the biggest fan of this book. And that is so unfortunate. I love monster romances. I love Julian Grace's writing in uh, Blood Moon. But this one was just a miss for me. Again, I'll reiterate this. I am more of a character-driven reader. And I feel like the majority of this book was focused on the, like, like secret relic finding plotline. Like, I... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see anything else. Like the romance in here was very, very physical to me, like very physical to like, this book is a full length book. It's over 300 pages. And I felt like the romance was not developed enough for me. Like it didn't feel like the two of them were in love at all at the end of this book. Like, I just feel like they have like a good physical relationship with each other. I did not feel the love at all. And I found the side plot line of like the hidden relic thing to be like, boring honestly i did not care i kept putting off this audiobook it took me days to listen to this book because i didn't want to listen to it honestly and that makes me sad because i love julian graves with blood moon but this one just didn't hit for me and i'm sad about it i'm really sad about it i just i didn't care and so that really worries me that if like maybe i won't like the next book in the series because that one comes out later this year I'm gonna try. It'll be fine. Um, I actually have also read a novella by Jillian Graves and that was a gargoyle romance and I gave that one four stars. I really liked it. The two books, two novellas that I've read by Jillian Graves, amazing books. This one just did not work for me. This was also her debut book. So like, I don't know. And maybe the like daddy dom part also just didn't vibe well with me. I have no clue. I've read some daddy dom romances and like, they're fine. They're not my favorite thing ever. But like, I felt like for some reason it was like forced in this book. Like I didn't feel like natural i don't really know how to describe it y'all <laughs> um but unfortunately this book was just not a hit for me personally anyways there you have it those are all 13 books that i've read or dnf'd so far this month in june let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the um ring emoji in the comment section down below um because there's a, a ring that is a big plot point in this book. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, leave a ring for me. Um, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.